Yo, 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 what's up, people? This is Robert Bassano. I know I said I wouldn't put out another video until September when I got back from my trip down south. And, um, but, you know, I had a little break. Figure I'd put together a little something for you guys for the weekend. Kind of keep your uh, palates wet with the whole idea of um, this balloon program. And really what this is all about is you got to decide for yourself. Do some research. I mean, really, people, do some research. Don't, don't, don't count on everything everybody says as this is what it is or this is what it, not, it, it can't be. Okay? But I am now entertaining the idea that balloons and rockets coexist together in these programs. There are programs where they're just launching balloons because it's older than the rocket program and that's the only way we could get up into the stratosphere and then it advanced to where they started using rockets to actually get they started using balloons to get rockets up into the stratosphere to allow a rocket to be launched further higher in altitude okay so just take that into consideration all right i'm not saying that rockets can't get to where they say they're getting to, but I don't think that they're getting there on their own. Okay? Um, Don Pettit kind of explains that in the interior of the rocket equation where it's costing anywhere between a thousand to ten thousand dollars per kilogram based on the payloads that are inside these these Soyuz rockets and these space shuttles where that you know, you got all these people, the average weight is somewhere between a hundred and you know, uh, 60 to 200 fucking pounds, depending on how many fucking donuts you've been eating with the NASA fucking program. And, um, you know, they're training in the same fucking environment they're going into. Now, I'm not going to get on that subject. I put a video out on that. It's some sort of fluid, di fluid dynamic environment because they're not going to put all those hours into training into a fucking aqua training center at NASA if they're not going into the same environment. And I don't want to hear this bullshit about, oh, well, they're training in an aqua environment on Earth because it's the closest they can get to simulating space. You don't know what the fuck is in space. So don't think that, well, they're training in an aqua environment because, you know, that's the closest they can get to neutral buoyancy or microgravity. Bull fucking shit. They're a military defense agency. All right? Guys that fly the shuttle. Guys that go up there, they're all fucking current active duty military or former military guys. Every fucking single one of them. Yeah, you got a few civilians that go up there, so big fucking deal. Big fucking deal. They're training in the water because that's the environment they're going into. NASA's very, very big into fluid dynamics. Very, very, very interested in fluid dynamics. And it's not because they need to continue to simulate all this shit on a computer. It's because that's the environment they're going into, all right? But for argument's sake, I want you guys to look at this photo. This is an artist's rendition of a balloon with a rocket attached to it, up, supposedly up in the stratosphere. Now, what I found interesting when I saw this photo was what's above it. Supposedly, this balloon gets to whatever altitude level, maybe just above the stratosphere, maybe into the mesosphere. But let's just say that this is the mesosphere, right? You got your constellation of stars that we all see from the ground level. But then all of a sudden, they crammed every fuck, the whole entire fucking universe and galaxies into the next level, which would be the thermosphere and exosphere. And then you have, this looks like some sort of firmament here, right? And then you got stars deep out in there. I want you to just keep this photo in mind every time you start doing research and thinking about holy shit could everything we see and especially the conversation I had with Eric Dollar regarding um, the speed of light because light can't travel in, in free space in a vacuum it doesn't move there's there's no there's nothing for light to travel which means that the Sun is within our atmosphere the moon is within our atmosphere okay which means that everything that the telescopes are seeing is within our fucking atmosphere, people. For that light to fucking travel, for that light to travel, 
it's got to interact with something, some sort of plasma, dark matter, dark fluid, you know, super sulfur hexafluoride, whatever the fuck may be up there. But it's got to interact with something for you to see something. If there's nothing there for it to interact with, you see nothing but fucking darkness, blackness, a blank fucking slate, just like everyone has seen for every damn balloon video footage and space footage where they're just looking out into the blackness of space. You don't see shit. So it begs the question, where the hell could they really be? Right? Are they beyond these levels? Could they be beyond, or could they just be in some sort of fucking dark void? Who knows? All right? But that's not the the focus of this presentation. The focus of this presentation is to show you a little bit more about these balloon programs, which will interest you. Okay? So let, let's go through some of these photos here. All right. So looking at this photo specifically, just check this out here. You've got, this was, this, I, I, I know when they launched the Orion, right? They were doing those um, parachute drops just to make sure this thing could actually function properly, right? So here you, you have this balloon ascending to 20 kilometers carrying up this so-called, what they would believe to be a satellite delivery platform, right? On a fucking balloon, not on a rocket. Now, this thing has uh, some sort of uh, propulsion system, chemical, solid rocket, where all the fuel is probably contained inside this circular donut shaped type of uh, vehicle, right? Launches up, it takes, it, it engines ignition and launch, launcher climbs, early, early fairing detachment, stage separation, this thing comes back down to the earth, then you have another stage coming down, then you have the satellite being deployed, payload inserted into desired orbit and upper stage D orbit, okay? So everything takes this journey, coming right back down to the plane, and then you have this thing floating out around it. But this thing doesn't stay up there forever. It'll maybe take maybe one orbit, travel a specific distance, and it comes right back down too. Nothing is fucking staying up there in continuous fucking low Earth orbit or geosync orbit for years. There's no fucking way. The Hubble at 27,000 pounds, no fucking way it stayed up there for 15 fucking years just floating around when... NASA's deputy program manager said specifically on our call, Hubble is constantly losing fucking altitude at 27,000 and a half fucking pounds. So where could it be right now? Right? Think about where could it be? In the bottom of the fucking ocean. That's where the hell it is. So let's go on. So here's another picture of what that vehicle you just saw would look like. Here's a description of basically how this thing would be designed and, and, and technically function. All right? Just, you know, you guys need to understand some of the science and technology, you know, check into this data. And this is something I wanted to show you guys. This is a cost against lift for balloon formats. So here goes the cost. Let's just say this is about 100000 200000 300000 400000 500000 600000 dollars Okay? Um, no, that's not 100 million, 200 million, 300 million, 400 million. Yeah, it, it could be. It could be. It could be 100 million, but they're breaking this down. Oh, wait, wait. This is 100,000 pounds. So this is a British um, data sheet. And they're showing you here. Single balloon, right? Based on the payload, get to maybe about 800, um, 800 grams. What is that? What's it? G? Lift? Uh, a key sheet. Uh, and then you got a three arm format, three balloons. They get up to higher altitudes. Actually, no, no, this is for uh, lift and weight. Then you got a triangle format, three balloons. Right? And it's based on how heavy the payload would be. All right. This guy jumping from a gondola, doing a parachute jump. The fuck can they just drop him out of an airplane? Why they got to drop him out of a balloon? So here goes another graphic chart I wanted to show you guys. You can see this. 
can't read the writing too much, but it goes to pre-flight, launch phase, ascent phase, cruise phase. I think it's just moving around there. Then it starts to do its venting phase, means that some of the, the helium is being released from the balloon so it can start to come back down. Then boom, they burst this bad boy, parachute deploys, and bam, they get this bad boy back. But wow, check out the view of the Earth. I don't know if that's real. If they actually use the real image in the background to show the Earth, but but here you go. What's the name of this company? O I O O N. Oh, Bloom. The name of the company is Bloom. We're gonna check that out. We're gonna go to their website to see what that all is, what that's about. Okay. Mr. James Van Allen, his three-foot raccoon. This guy was building these fucking things in the laboratory at the University of Iowa. Raccoons. This is what he put his Geiger counter, his photo, photometer, magnetometers. He put all of this into the nose cone of one of these rockets to measure... What he claims to be the Van Allen rockets. I'm actually putting together a presentation that I'm gonna that's gonna be pretty detailed on Van Allen in September. Um, I will be providing an assessment that the Van Allen radiation belts don't exist, and if they do, and I'm using a competing hypothesis that if they do exist. I'm going to provide some evidence and data, comparative data, to show you guys that the radiation they claim that's in the South Atlantic, called the South Atlantic Anomaly, is actually trapped um, radiation that was dispersed from a hydrogen um, detonation in the atmosphere where it trapped all of that radiation in some sort of pocket up in the atmosphere and what Van Allen actually measured was something that he was actually a part of when he was a lieutenant commander or commander in the United States Navy working on these um, custom firing fuses for the US Army all right but that'll be in September I'm not gonna talk about this guy now this is NASA's logo you see that rocket Attached to a balloon. That's NASA's logo. That's NASA's logo. Rocket in blue attached to a balloon. That's NASA's program for you right there. Now, we're gonna I'm gonna show you video on this. Because this is a company, this is a private company, I think, in Romania. They actually can deploy a balloon from the fucking ocean. They can inflate this fucker from the water. Okay? This, this was, uh, I think there was a satellite attached to this, and they deployed this bad boy. I'm going to show you the video. You'll find it interesting. But I'm going to tell you something here right now. I want you to think about this. This balloon is black in color. There's some other things that I'm going to show you that, that get you interested in researching something else um, regarding this particular balloon. Because think about this. If they launch this balloon, right, say at dusk, would you be able to see this bad boy at night if there was a satellite attached to it on a 100-foot tether? You hell no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't see shit in the dark night black sky unless it, they lost control of it and it passed in front of the moon. Then you'd be like, what the hell was that? Okay, because remember, they got transparent balloons. They got these dark colored ones. But if this was at, if you saw, you would not see this at nighttime at all. You wouldn't see this at nighttime at all. Period. And what's interesting about this, they got this fucking thing, it's probably about the size of a fucking football field. So you got to ask yourself. If you did see this in the daytime, this is crazy for me to say this. 
Could this be the thing creating the fucking eclipse? The lunar fucking eclipse in the daytime. Passing in front of the sun. Football sized fucking balloon. Passing in front of the sun in the daytime. There goes your fucking eclipse. Because think about how slow the lunar eclipse is. When people see it. They say, ah, don't put your, don't look at it. Don't look directly at it. You know, because you'll damage the retina. You'll damage your eyes. Don't look. What the fuck? You don't want people looking directly at it. I think I know why you want people looking fucking directly at it. It's a possibility. You can't. This. You cannot dispense with all possibilities. But then you got to ask yourself. I know people are going to be saying. Well, wait a minute, fucking Robert. I mean, what, what happened fucking back in the ancient days when they used to see these things and they recorded all these things? Yeah, you're right. They did record all these things. But how the fuck you know the technology didn't exist back then either? How do you know there wasn't an advanced fucking race or species of people who had the technology to do this kind of shit to pull a smoke and mirrors fucking effect on these ancients to get them all freaked out and shit to worship some fucking god? Okay? Thinking, oh, well, the god of the sun, the god of the moon, the god of the earth, the god of the seas. Think about that. Because they got you believing in all kinds of shit that you ain't never seen for yourself. You ain't never proved that that shit is actually real. Like I said, they ain't fucking nothing real. It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. And I'm not seeing too many fucking proofs. Period. I'm seeing a lot more comparative analysis of shit, which is great. Because it's starting to wake people the fuck up. We need new shit out there. Here's a November 14, 2009 launch. Here's this fucking balloon. This thing was huge. They went to go recover it out in the middle. Of, come on, they do these fucking things right out in the middle. World's largest solar balloon initiated on the sea. Solar balloon. Solar, people. So think about that. It's a soul. So it needs the fucking sunlight, right? It needs the sunlight. This fucking thing gets the size of a fucking football field, a fucking stadium. They get it up into the sky in the stratosphere and say, okay, let's start navigating this thing and, and moving it towards the sun. Because we told people fucking 10 years ago there was going to be... Oh, five years ago, there's going to be another lunar eclipse. So, boom, there you go. Now, the closer this fucking thing, the closer this thing, the higher this thing gets in altitude near the sun, the larger it's going to get, right? Because what does helium do? It fucking expands. So, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Just think about that. Think about the possibility that they can actually flip a switch and, tra and change the transparency of this thing in the, day the daytime to where literally it, it, it converts to a translucent uh, texture and then they flip it off, flip off the, the, the switch and it goes back to this color. So that now you got a lunar eclipse. You can't dispense with what I'm saying. You can laugh at it. You can say I'm crazy. But everything, every option is a fucking possibility. Every option. Everything's a fucking possibility, people. Everything's a fucking possibility. Period. So let me show you guys this video on this balloon. So what I'm getting ready to show you guys is actually a computer graphic, um, a CGI video of that previous photo I showed you of that balloon actually being launched from the sea. So this is a computer generated image video of how this thing all works. The name of the company is called ARCA. Okay? A-R-C-A. -A. They're out of fucking New Mexico, by the way. New Mexico. All right? So check this out for yourself. All right? Just check it out. It's only like four minutes, 47 seconds. Check it out.
It's fucking incredible, man. This this ship is out in the middle of fucking nowhere. You, I mean, literally, they're doing this out of view and out of sight of everyone, man. Everyone. And you best believe, you best believe, with all this refugee shit going on and these refugees going across the Mediterranean, these people may be actually fucking with these type of operations, man. They don't want these refugees to see this shit. They maybe should be doing it out in the middle of the South South Atlantic or the, the Southern Indian Ocean. This is where I think they're doing all this shit. They have to be. They can't be doing... They, they might be doing it out in the middle of the fucking Mediterranean where they don't want anyone else to see. But when you see this fucking thing go up in the air, man... You know, can't we have in flights fly around and say... I mean, this is this explains why pilots have been reporting these UFOs. And they turn out to be fucking balloons. Check this shit out. Just watch this. This is your raccoon. There goes the rocket. Boom. Deployed. Launched. Now that balloon probably can get to about... 60, 80,000, maybe 100,000 feet, and then bam, the rocket takes the, takes the journey, gets deployed, and takes the rest of the way out there. Now, there's a possibility that Van Allen might have gotten to fucking 2,400 kilometers. Maybe. Possibility. I don't think he fucking did. I don't think he did. But he could have, because... The research I've been reading says that he used probably about fucking somewhere between six to eight, maybe ten fucking balloons, which means that he got up there very quick on that balloon, got up very high, and then this rocket took over. Took over. Put a parachute on the back of this motherfucker, and bam, you get the shit back. You got your measurement. But the interesting thing about this, this fucking thing is so fucking primitive, man. This is a, such a primitive fucking method for a fucking space program. And this is exactly how I believe they're still fucking doing everything. But they can't do it in plain sight and view of the general public. They got to do this shit down in Antarctica, the southern Indian Ocean, out in the middle of the southern Indian Ocean, the South Atlantic Ocean, maybe out in the middle of the Mediterranean, maybe uh, uh, the Arctic. They don't want people seeing this shit. So they'll show you a rocket launch. That fucker takes a vertical journey and then takes a horizontal fucking journey at 33 fucking degrees on a horizontal plane, lands in the fucking ocean somewhere. After a couple of minutes, everybody's got their head tilted back and their fucking necks hurting from looking up at the sky. Their eyes are hurting from looking up at the fucking sun. Most of these launches take place at fucking nighttime where nobody ain't fucking awake to actually see the fucking thing launch, and then it crashes down so fucking somewhere. They know where it's going to crash down at. Or, or a parachute deploys from the fucking rocket. It safely lands somewhere out away from fucking population and civilization, and no one sees anything anymore. But everything else is being done on fucking balloons. Period. This is the way it's done. Billions of dollars. This shit costs less than fucking a million dollars to do this shit. Now the equipment that are actually attached to these rockets and is being deployed probably costs a couple of million dollars to develop that shit. But that's where the money's being spent to, to build the technology, to develop the technology. But the launches are on fucking balloons, people. Balloons. That's one video. Let me show you the other ones. So this is another one in 2010. I showed you one for 2009. This is Mission 4. CGI, of course. It's not the real fucking thing. They ain't going to show you the real footage. But they're just showing you, okay, here's your computer-generated video image. All right? Here's another one being launched. Now we know where most of the money's going to. These guys fucking got the market on fucking helium, people. They got the fucking market on helium. They got the market. The Navy, NASA, they got the market on fucking helium. This is incredible. But it's not so incredible to where I'm still, I can't believe it. I fucking believe this shit. 
Because who else is out there talking about this is how all the satellites are actually being deployed? And I know people are saying, well, shit, how are they controlling them? How, you, how can you control the linear paths and the predicted paths that these satellites... No, exactly. The key word is predictive. You don't have an exact fucking longitude, latitude, geospatial location and tracking of this shit that's going up in the sky. You get what they want you to see on the screen of where the satellite may be. Because when you go look up in the fucking sky, it may not be where they tell you if that's where it's going to be. You see something else. You can't positively identify that's exactly what the fuck you're seeing when you go on these satellite tracking websites and it tells you, oh, there goes the Hubble, there goes the ISS, there goes Chandra, there goes Hubble, there goes um, the GOES uh, weather satellite. You don't fucking know that's exactly what they're showing you. And I'm going to prove to you you don't know exactly what they're showing to you. In the next fucking illustration I'm going to present, which actually proves to you that everything that they say that is up in the sky could be artificial. And when I say artificial, I, I mean exactly what the fuck I say. Meaning it ain't fucking real. It's some sort of signals generated fucking capability. And I'm going to prove it to you. Watch. So I wanted to show this to you guys. This, I found this information. I found this information on a website I'm not going to disclose right now. It's called Horizon Information Portal. I'm not going to tell you exactly how to get there right now, but you'll know in September because I actually need to order this data. It comes from the AIP Niels Bohr Library. Okay? And I need to put in requests to get this information so it can be mailed to me. So I'm actually I've already begun that process. And in September, I'm going to blow the fucking doors off this whole satellite bullshit that's been going around. Because you got people out there who claim they know satellites exist. I'm going to, I'm going to, not only I'm going to rain on their parade, but I'm going to rain on their parade. And I'm going to piss and shit all over it. Okay? Because this was found in an official fucking university database. I'm not going to tell you which one right now. If you want to go search for it yourself, go ahead, go for it. All right? But I want you to see something very interesting here, people. Very interesting here. Okay? Check this shit out. Artificial satellites tracking. All right, there are 12 fucking documents under this. Artificial satellites in communication. Artificial satellites in communication costs. Artificial satellites in geodesic congresses. Artificial satellites in ionospheric research. Artificial satellites in remote sensing. Space surveillance. Artificial satellites in surveying. Artificial satellites in telecommunication. Telecommunication, Project Echo, we already know about that. That was launched. That was the fucking first satellite launched on a fucking balloon. Project Telstar. Artificial satellites in telecommunications Europe. Artificial satellites in, in Russia. Okay? Russia. So you see how many documents there are. I've already put in a request to order all these documents. It's going to take a while because I had to contact the university um, to put a request in to have this document, these documents made available to me. They're coming to me in hard copy, which means that there's nothing going to be electronic. I'm going to have to literally order all of this shit. Okay? And just to show you here, I got to contact the repository. International Co Catalog. University of Iowa, Main Library, Archives, Iowa City. I literally got to either go there or, or just pay for this shit and get it myself. All right? I forked out the money to do just ex do exactly fucking that <laughs> but none of this shit is available online all right so let's go back here just to show you guys so i want you to know artificial you want to doubt what the fuck that term really means go fucking look it up go look it up go fucking look it up 
yourself. Because they fucking saying exactly. They're telling you exactly what the fuck it is that they're launching. And let's see. Let's see if there's any photographs in this library. Artificial satellites. Search for photos. Let's check it out. There you go, right there. You type in artificial fucking satellites. Search results turned up Von Braun. Warner Von Braun. Standing there with fucking... Who is it? Uh, him and Van Allen. Keywords, artificial satellites, space vehicles, model vehicles. One fucking image. Twenty fucking dollars. I ain't paying for that shit. I found it online. The fuck would I want to pay twenty dollars for that shit for? Let me take you to another video. California, label scientists enlist raccoons to unravel the secrets of the sun. The raccoon is a helium-filled plastic balloon some 70 feet in height, supporting a 12-foot rocket loaded with a television transmitter. The raccoon is released from the ocean. Its primary purpose is to study the effects of solar storms or prominences on radio communications. Radar tracks the raccoon until a solar storm is sighted. Then the rocket is fired from the balloon. Within two minutes, it is 70 miles high, flashing back television pictures of the upheavals on the sun. Amazing pictures such as these, showing the violent motion of the tremendous solar explosions. Now, I'm sorry. I'm very fucking sorry. But that ain't a fucking video of the sun. That ain't no fucking video of the sun. That fucking can't be. That ain't no fucking video of the sun. But you decide, though. Just keep watching it. An honoring electronic brain and a far-seeing electronic eye bring the awesome solar eruptions before our eyes. For science, new progress in probing the mystery of the sun and its influence on the world around us. You saw it there for yourself, people. You saw it for yourself. Now, I, I want to I wanna make a point about something. At first, when I heard about these raccoons, so as I was saying, at first, when I found out about these raccoons, and I was researching Van Allen, I'm sorry, man. I pulled the race card. I thought to myself, this is a racist motherfucker, man. I mean, you got to think about it, though. Back in the days of Van Allen, you know, yeah, they were a bit racist. But then, I, as I kept doing the research, I realized why he called them raccoons. Because it's combining a rocket with a balloon. But... I'm pretty sure him and Von Braun and all his buddies in fucking Iowa in the middle of the Bible Belt Christian area of the United States, I bet you when they came up with the name, they were like, oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> this would be real funny. It, these these black folk, they'll probably get a, take offense to it, you know, because they think that, you know, we're, we're calling it coons. No, no, not at all. I don't look at it as that way. Man, Van, Van Allen probably was a racist son of a bitch. And uh, I don't have any respect for him because I found some information in his research that uh, he lied about. And uh, again, I'll prove that and show that again in September. And you decide for yourself. But here goes another video of a, launch, of a raccoon launch that I want to show you. And uh, again, you decide for yourself. JP Aerospace. You see, they use they using two balloons to get this rocket up in the air. 
Check out JP Aerospace too. Just check them out online. Now, let me tell you what was interesting about that shit. Stand by. What was interesting about that launch, to me, and it's probably nothing, was the fact that that, that girl in the background was started laughing. It was like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like it was something totally new and incredible that they achieved that has never been done before. Either she's dumb as shit, okay, it is she's dumb as shit, or she's laughing because I can't, she's probably saying to herself, I can't believe we just launched a balloon with a fucking rocket on it, and, and watch it just take off, watch it just take off, you know, controlled, stable, and they're thinking, holy shit, we're about to get a contract from NASA to take over their program and start launching some of their payloads. So you got to think about this, right? NASA says on their website for Wallops, they got balloons the size of football fields. So think about this. Say you launch four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these fucking things, right? Ten fucking balloons the size of fucking football fields. That's a shitload of helium, right? And then you attach an 8,000, 20,000, 30,000 fucking pound rocket full of fucking chemical and solid rocket fuel, multi-stage. You get this fucking thing to about 100,000, 150,000 feet, right? And bam, you push the button, and that fucker goes, whew. that fucker just shoots up into the fucking stratosphere, beyond the mesosphere, beyond the thermosphere, and now it's past the Kármán line. See, I don't think we ever got Beyond the exosphere. Because every rocket launch that took place from the surface of the Earth gets to about 73 miles. So they had to figure out a way to get beyond 70 fucking three miles. And what better way to fucking do it? What better way to do it? And just to prove this to you, just to show you even more proof, what I'm going to show you next is an article from Univer Universal Today where a country actually talks about using balloons to get to the fucking moon. Stand by. You're not going to believe this shit. So check this out. It's that same company I told you about, right? Same company. And they say Romanian group attempts moon mission with giant balloon. This is fucking 17 November 2009. Romanian group attempts moon mission with giant balloon. And here's what they say. Here's what they say. The first attempt to send, that's that same company, Arca, right? And my mistake, I said that they were in, um, they were in um, New Mexico. They're in Romania. The first attempt to send a rocket to the moon via balloon hit a snag on Monday. The first test of the Aeronautics and Cosmonauts Romanian Association's ARCA balloon launch rocket or raccoon ended in failure when the inflation arms used to fill the balloon became entangled in the balloon itself. The arm had to be cut and the operation which required the use of a large naval frigate was curtailed. ARCA hopes to compete in the Google Lunar X Prize and intends on using their unusual rocket system to send an equally Unique spherical lunar lander to win a $30 million X prize. Rockets were, raccoons were tried and then abandoned by the U.S. in the 1950s because they blew off course in windy conditions. Arca's European Lunar Explorer is a simple design. The super huge balloon carrying a system of three rockets will soar to about 11 miles up 
Then the first two rocket stages will fire and boost the system into low Earth orbit and use the final stage to boost it into the boost it to the moon. The ELE ELE will then travel to the moon and deploy its its lunar lander, which resembles a knobby rubber ball that uses its own rocket engine to ensure a soft landing. Watch their video of it, how it will work below. So they got a video of how this shit is going to work. I already showed this to you, right? I showed this to you. But let me show you that simulation that they're fucking talking about. You're going to laugh. Trust me, you're going to laugh. So what I'm going to show you is the flight sequence for this thing where they talk about landing this fucking thing on the moon. Now this is what, this is the kind of shit that that leads me to believing that the moon is not fucking 258 fucking thousand miles from the surface of the earth. This type of shit right here is why I'm fucking sticking to my claim that the moon is not fucking 258,000 miles from the surface of the earth. Give or take fucking a couple of thousand miles. It's this fucking shit right here. All right? Here you go. I just thought about something looking at this fucking video. It dawned on me. Looking at this video just now. If that balloon is solar powered, right? It gets to a maximum altitude above 100,000 feet. Now, you remember when Felix Baumgartner's balloon launched, people couldn't even see it from the fucking ground. You couldn't even see that balloon Felix Baumgartner got to at 127,000 feet from the fucking ground. You could not see it. So I want you to think about this and, and drill this into your fucking head. If they are launching these fucking balloons at high altitudes, right, during the day, you see the fucking thing go up, but then all of a sudden, you won't even want to fucking look up in the sky anymore because your fucking eyes hurt from looking up at the sun, your neck hurts from tilting back your fucking giant fucking noggin, with fucking nothing in it. And then you take your attention off this fucking thing. This balloon's launched up there. You're not really sure what the fuck is attached to it. It gets at 120,000 feet, maybe 130,000 feet. And then bam, they fire off this fucking rocket. Ask yourself this. Are you going to see a fucking rocket actually being launched at that altitude? The fuck you are. You're going to see maybe some kind of spark in the fucking daytime sky. What you think is maybe a flicker of light from... The sun reflecting off of something. You don't know what the fuck it is, but you don't pay much attention on it because you ain't you don't have a fucking pair of high power binoculars with you or a scope or anything like that to know what the fuck that was. You probably won't even see a fucking vapor trail. You're not gonna see a plume trail or vapor trail at 120,000 feet. Because this thing is so high up in fucking altitude that when that rocket launches, boom, there goes your fucking satellite right there. There's your satellite right there. And then that fucker's going to take his little journey into microgravity, into some, into atmosphere, right? And it's going to float across the fucking earth to whoever the fuck is going to go for however many hours. And then it's going to come back down just like everything else that comes fucking right back down on a fucking parachute far off fucking somewhere in another fucking country. You, it's out of sight, out of mind. You think this fucking thing is gone for years. It's out in deep fucking space. You're wrong. It ain't fucking out in deep space. A day later, this fucking thing is somewhere else. In fucking the tundra somewhere in fucking Russia or Sweden or Germany. Who the fuck knows? But it ain't land, landed around fucking populace where everybody can see the fucking thing coming down. Let me keep, keep playing the video for you. Again, remember, it's all CGI, so don't expect to see no real shit. They ain't never show you nothing real. They're never going to show you shit real. 
Because the shit ain't real. That's why. It ain't fucking real. This is just theoretical, hey, this is what we wanted to do. But we, it ain't no way we can get it, get it to happen. That's it. You can do anything on a fucking computer. Anything. You can get a computer to do fucking anything. That's the only advancements we've had in fucking society. Is what we can do with fucking technology. But people? Ain't no fucking people going out here. No people going out here. It's too fucking dangerous. You want to strap your ass to a motherfucking bomb? Go for it. Go for it. I'll be here waiting for you when you come back. In a billion fucking pieces. Check this shit. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is the thing that they were talking about that I just read to you. See how the thing flips around? Now you tell me, you get it to flip around like that in microgravity, right? It's supposed to be in space, so to speak. You get those jets flying around to, to flip the damn thing around in orientation. How the fuck do you get it to stop? Because according to the laws of Newton, an object in motion stays in motion until something fucking stops it. But then you got to have all of this type of fucking pitch and yarn control. They don't have that kind of control. They don't have that type of fucking control because they don't know what the fuck is really out there. Look at this thing. Suppose it's the shape of a fucking some kind of spherical ball. It lands on the fucking moon, right? Somehow they had enough fuel for it to get out there. And remember, people, ain't no fucking way the moon is 258,000 miles. No fucking way. I'm dead serious, people. There ain't no fucking way the moon is 258,000 miles away from the surface of the earth. No way. Look at this thing. Laugh your ass off now. Because I know I was. I was laughing my ass off. Incredible. So, this video, I'm muting this shit because I don't need no fucking copyright strikes. Um, this video is of the same balloon. They launched it on land. Okay. It's black in color. Now, the reason why I want you guys to pay particular attention to this one is because I'm going to compare it to something that went viral on the fucking internet in 1998. Yeah, somewhere around there. NASA paid attention to this shit. The whole world was paying attention to this shit. It's online, all right? But I want you to look at this video. I want you to look at it. I want you to see what this balloon is doing. How it just looks all fucking warped and shit. Yeah, the wind's fucking with it or whatever. But it's got this weird fucking shape to it, okay? It's got a weird fucking shape to it. And I want you to see how it just takes this shape. All right? It's the same fucking balloon. It's of course it's rising in altitude, like all fucking helium balloon balloons do. There goes the satellite on the bottom of it. This is how Echo One was deployed. On a balloon. And just look at this thing. Just take a real damn good look at this. See how it's all warped and it's just looking all weird and shit. Let me see if I can fast forward to you guys. So you can really see what this thing is really doing. Let me go forward here a little bit more. This guy's talking about this, the Romanian space. So you see how it is. It looks up in the sky. See how it looks. Okay, now check out check out the shape of this balloon as it keeps gaining in altitude. Now I'm going to pause it there for a second, and then I'm going to show you something else that went viral and actually freaked NASA out. Now, they, this was a fucking satellite, people. This was, a, this was a satellite being launched on a balloon. This was a satellite being launched on a balloon. Keyword, satellite. Satellite. Okay, 
We saw the weird shapes that this fucking thing can take. Now watch this. Just watch this. Hold on. Now this... This is what they call the Black Knight Satellite. The Black Knight Satellite. That's what they said this shit was. Okay? Now I want you to look at this and ask yourself, ask yourself, really take a look at this. This video is online of this shit. I want you to really take a good look at this shit. Look at some of these photos and ask yourself if there's a possibility that that black fucking balloon in 1998 was actually a test flight. And somehow the fucking space shuttle missions caught a fucking photo of this fucking thing. They didn't know what the fuck it was. Because you got to know, STS missions, they investigate everything. They What they call, the term they use is interrogate. Remember that video I put out about the, when I was reading that shit from the U.S. Air Force, right? That interview where the, where the pilot says from that uh, C-119, yeah, we always fly around and invest and interrogate, interrogate the, the balloon and satellite just to make sure that, hey, that's our fucking, that's our piece of gear that's floating out there. But look at these photos that are lying on Google. They're claiming to be the black satellite. Some fucking alien fucking crap. Alien fucking craft, my motherfucking ass. Alien craft? I'm not saying I debunked this shit. I'm not saying that at all. I don't think I have. I think there's more. They said this thing is 13 fucking thousand years old. 13,000 years old, my motherfucking ass. I said that twice. Apologize for that one. But dude, please, please. You people out there smart enough... To look at this shit. Man, come on. They call this the Black Knight Satellite. Black Knight Satellite. But let's go even better. Let's, let's do one even better. Okay? Because we need to play this shit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to type in Black Knight Satellite. NASA. NASA just went along with this shit. NASA just went along with this shit. Period. They went along with it, people. Okay, let's jump forward here. Let's see what this dumbass is saying. Hang on. Currently, it is a debris from a previous space mission. Currently, there are more than 1,800 rocket bodies floating as debris in lower Earth orbit. Now, this debris is a serious threat to existing satellites and even to future space missions. As shown in the movie Gravity, any impact of or space exploration. Yeah, they say it was space debris or some shit. Space debris? It's a fucking balloon, man. So it is no surprise that NASA has patented a solution to tackle this problem. The patented invention uses a spacecraft. The spacecraft tracks the target. Look at this shit. To generate a motion profile of the target debris. They want to capture this fucking thing. Apparently, this fucking balloon got so fucking high in altitude that it's just trapped up in the fucking thermosphere somewhere because it's solar fucking powered. So it's getting constant fucking sunlight and it's not coming fucking back down. That's what this is. It's the fucking balloon, man. Ain't no goddamn fucking alien craft or some fucking space debris. Yeah, it's space debris. It's space debris. You're damn right it's fucking space debris. You're damn right it's space debris. 
It's that fucking balloon. It's definitely that fucking balloon. It is definitely that fucking balloon, man. And it's trapped up there. It's trapped in altitude. Because it's solar power. There you have it, people. What else can I tell you? There ain't nothing else I can tell you. There ain't nothing else I can fucking tell you. It's not what you know. It's what you can prove. We've been trying to get deep into space using fucking balloons and rockets. We've been trying to see how we can put a heavy payload rocket on fucking 10, 20, 30 fucking high altitude balloons. Think about how much helium that would fucking take. NASA's buying a shitload of helium, man. You got to transport all that shit to these remote locations. You got to transport all that shit to remote locations. You got to know how to create that shit. And then you got to launch these balloon programs. You got to launch these balloons. You got to get the satellites up there. Right now, I don't think the shit they're claiming is in, in, in orbit ain't there. But let's, real quick, let's see if we can check out this company, Bloom. Okay, let's check it out. So here it is. I found this company, Bloom. And they got a video called Stratospheric Spain. 200 meters. They're in a balloon. 500 meters. This is in Spain. Eight kilometers. 11 kilometers. 12 kilometers. Keep going. Fifteen kilometers. Seventeen. Thirty-three kilometers. They're a third away. Third the way. A third of the way to fucking the Carmen line. Check this. I mean, come on. You can even... You can fly one of these fucking things. You can pay them to launch the fucking thing for you. Check this shit out. Pod. Just go up there in a fucking pod. How many of y'all want to go with me, man? Huh? We'll find out what the cost of this fucking thing is to sit up there just like you're in a fucking airplane. Floating up in the fucking... You'd be like fucking Augustus Picard, man. This is wild as hell. Fly a balloon. Our near space flight will take you to the edge of our atmosphere where you will see it glow bluish and then a delicate protection from the harness of the cosmos. They got this shit down. Flight cycle. Check this out, people. I mean, you got to check it out for yourself. What the hell is this? Oh, this is the launch phase. Oh, shit, it's interactive. Boom, 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 boom. Ah, that was from that, uh... Oh, shit, you come down on a parachute. Ain't that a bitch. Cool as hell, dude. Check this out. Pre-flight, 3 hours, 45 minutes. Preparation of the launch site and balloon vehicle. Countdown and vertical liftoff. 10 minutes. Accent phase, 1 hour. Ascent phase. You get to an altitude of 36 kilometers. At a constant altitude of 36 kilometers. 2 hours up there. Venting of the gas to descend to the landing area. Separation of the sail, optional zero, lunar, and Martian gravity period. How the hell you know it's on a Martian? Power forward deployment, 10 minutes. Guided descent to one of the predefined landing spots in the landing area. Not what you know, it's what you can prove, people. Peace out, people. Have a good day. Take care.